Hello, Montana. This is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. It'll be a lot of fun. There's no place like a Rosendale rally. Forget Trump. Rosendale. But there is no place like a Trump rally, right? We have a good time. We have a good time. And in the election, we won this state by a lot. That was not close. But I am thrilled to be back in Big Sky Country with so many of my great friends and true American patriots. Thank you. Thank you. From the Rocky Mountains to the Great Plains, the people of Montana love our country, love our country so much. They honor our values, and you always respect our great American flag. You see what's happening. This is an incredible time for our nation. We have the best economy in history. The stock market is at record highs. Unemployment is at historic lows. And more Americans are working today than ever, ever, ever before. That's a great stat, isn't it? Think of it. More Americans today. And it grows every week. Every week. It gets higher, higher. But more Americans are working today than have ever worked before in our country. It's a great stat. That's a big stat. Our coal miners are back to work. And we are fighting every day for our great ranchers and loggers and farmers, and we're winning that fight, and we're winning it quickly. We're rebuilding our military, crushing the terrorists, and taking care of our veterans. America is winning again, and America is being respected again. As you all saw this week, the Senate is now considering a truly exceptional nominee for the United States Supreme Court, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. And he's doing really well. But do you believe the anger and the meanness on the other side? Sick. It's sick. The whole country has now seen his amazing intellect and his brilliant legal mind. Judge Kavanaugh deserves overwhelming bipartisan support. And I think he's going to be one of our truly great Supreme Court justices. So tonight, we're joined by truly terrific Republican leaders from the great state of Montana, including a friend of mine, an incredible senator, somebody that works so hard. And I can tell you, I don't want to embarrass him, but I'm going to tell you, he loves you, Senator Steve Daines. Hello, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Great job. Steve is a worker, and he does an incredible job. You also have a great attorney general who I've gotten to know over the years, Tim Fox, doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Your Secretary of State, Corey Stapleton. Corey. Thanks, Corey. State Superintendent of Public Instruction. And he's just, I mean, this is a fantastic person. Elsie Arnson. Elsie, thank you. Thank you, Elsie. Great job. Been fantastic. You are really, she has done some job. I've heard all about you, your reputation. Thank you very much. And your outstanding Montana GOP chairwoman, Deborah Lamb. Yeah. 
So, Deborah, how are we doing now compared to Election Day almost two years ago? Can you believe it? How are we doing? Better, even? Better, good. That's what we're doing in most states. And the states that we won, we're doing better. Thank you. Thanks. Great job. Great job, Deborah. I'm also thrilled to be joined by Montana's terrific member of Congress, a true champion for Montana. And I'll, I'll tell you what, this man has fought in more ways than one for your state. He has fought for your state. Greg Gianforte, he is a fighter and a winner. He's a winner. Great. He loves your state. Thank you very much, Greg. Great job. Everybody has to get out and vote for Greg and vote for people that are going to vote for us. Because without that, you're going to lose a lot of the things that we've won over the last two years. You're going to lose them, and you're going to lose them fast. Can't let that happen. But I'm here for a very specific reason. Please welcome the person that we have such respect for. He's now leading in the polls. But I don't want to say that. I want to say he's just a little bit like one or two points behind. Is that okay, Matt, for me to say that? But he is somebody who is going to be a phenomenal United States Senator from Montana, Matt Rosendale. Matt, come on up. Matt. Where's Matt? Come on up, Matt. Come on up, Matt. Welcome back to Montana, Mr. President. This crowd is all here for you. And what a crowd it is. Thank you for fighting for us and for always putting America first. Montana is going to right a wrong this November, and we're going to send you the conservative reinforcements that you need to continue your good work. My promise to each and every one of you is that I will always put Montana first and stick with President Trump to make sure we advance his agenda. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare and give you options on health care that you can actually afford. We're going to protect your public lands and fight against the liberals that are trying to grab your guns. We're going to confirm more justices like Neil Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, people that will uphold the Constitution and defend your Second Amendment rights. Speaking of the Second Amendment, we have some breaking news tonight. We were informed and learned last night that the NRA has endorsed my campaign. We're going to secure our border, enforce our laws, and build that wall.
We're going to keep this economy growing. Your tax is low and get government off of your back and out of your wallet. We've all seen the problems with big government. Politicians representing themselves and not us. Intoxicated with privilege and power. They start worrying about the next election instead of the next generation. <laughs> President Trump, I agree with you. We need term limits. That's why, if you elect me, I promise to serve no more than two terms. The people of Montana support term limits. They believe in doing your job and returning home, and so do I. <laughs> President Trump, thank you for your support. We need everyone in this room and across this state to step up, and we can win this race. President Trump and I are counting on you to help us here. So tonight, I humbly stand before each and every one of you and ask for your vote this November. Together, we will win this race, and we will send President Trump the support and help that he needs back in Washington. Thank you, Montana. Thank you, President Trump. May God bless each and every one of you and the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, very much. Thank you. Matt Rosenberg. Very, very important, very, very important that we elect Matt and, frankly, other Republicans. We have to get the Republicans. We'll get things we want. We've started the wall. Everybody wants the wall. We've spent $3.2 billion on the wall. We've got to get the rest of the funding. We're going to get it. The Democrats want to obstruct that. They want to obstruct our great justices. And by the way, you obstruct these justices, you're going to lose your Second Amendment. You're going to lose your right to those guns. You're going to lose your Second Amendment. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. And don't forget, Tester's going to vote with the Waters and the Pelosi. Can you imagine? Maxine Waters is your new leader in the party. Can you believe it? Maxine Waters. She is something. But he's going to vote for Schumer. They're going to do whatever they say. They stick it. I will say this. I will say this. For one thing, their policies are horrible. They're for open borders, meaning let all the crime come in. They're against so many things that you want. You know, I've been saying, and I've been saying it strongly, they're going to take away, they're going to hurt your Social Security so badly, and they're killing you on Medicare. Just remember that. I'm going to protect your Social Security. We're going to take care of your Social Security. Matt Rosendale is going to make sure we're not touching your Social Security, and your Medicare is only going one way. That's stronger. They're going to end up taking it away from you, and you won't even know what happened. And on top of that, you're going to pay more tax. It's crazy. John Tester will never drain the swamp because he happens to live in the swamp and he loves the swamp. John Tester, I feel a little guilty because, you know, he did run the most beautiful commercial. I heard yesterday it started, and he's like my best friend, President Trump this, President Trump that. It's amazing when you win a state by a lot of points how even Democrats can like you. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but the problem is he's never going to vote for me. He's not going to vote. 
But he's taken more cash from lobbyists than almost anyone in the entire Senate. He's controlled by his donors. One of the saddest things that I've seen is when John Tester and what he did to a great, great man, Admiral Ronnie Jackson. Admiral Jackson was subjected to horrible lies and smears. Now, I'm, you know, a victim of that, too, but I'm sort of getting used to it. <laughs> At least it's my job. You know, I was going to say, I'm a politician. I never thought I was going to say, I'm a politician. Can you believe I'm a, I guess I'm a politician, you know? I guess I'm a politician. Think of it. I didn't want to say that. One of the few times I've said it, yeah, I'm a politician. But, you know, I've only run once, and that was for president, and I won. How did that happen, right? Isn't that nice? I won once, and I won. A lot of people have spent their lives trying to be president. We know them all. Some we respect, and some we don't respect too much. But Ronnie Jackson, he's a doctor. He's an admiral. He's actually the doctor that gave me my physical. And he said that I'm in great shape. And the Democrats and liberals and deep state, they were very upset to hear that. So they got tougher and tougher, and they lied more, and they write more books now. I never saw — I have books that stacked up this high. Actually, the ones that are really good are number one, two, and three on the bestsellers list, right? The ones — the really good ones. By justice, you know? I call her justice, but she's judge, but she's justice to me. Janine, we love her. <laughs> judge Janine by Greg Jarrett. How about Bongino? He's got a very successful book. How about Bongino? So many, and they're all doing great, and that's what makes me happy. But the media doesn't talk about those books. They only talk about the bad ones, of which there are plenty. They're lies, but they're plenty. But Admiral Jackson, his reputation was attacked, and all of those horrible things that were said about him turned out to be lies, and they turned out to be false. Remember? People don't want to say that. In the last election, Washington Democrats put John Tester in charge of electing extreme liberals. I mean, I'm talking about serious liberals, many of whom you're watching attacking Judge Kavanaugh and looking like fools, frankly, looking like fools. And one of them will most likely be a candidate to run against your favorite of all time president, me. me. But when I see the anger in their eyes, when I see the anger of what they say to an intellect far greater than theirs, not even a contest, but I see the anger and the hatred What's, what are they doing? What are they doing? They're losing by doing it. They're losing by doing it. I just want to finish off, though. What Tester did to Admiral Jackson should never, ever be allowed. Ronnie Jackson is a great man. Ronnie Jackson has led a great and beautiful life. And to have lies told about him I would never repeat what they are. See, in my case, they repeat them. I say, don't repeat them. They're terrible. They say, no, we're going to deny them. Do we love Sean Hannity, by the way? Yeah. I love him. But here's the only thing. He puts up all these losers that say horrible things. I've got to talk to him. One after another. Donald Trump, he's lost it up here. You know, it's pretty tough. I stand up here giving speeches for an hour and a half, many times without notes. And then they say, he's lost it. And yet we have 25,000 people showing up to speeches. 
And, and by the way, look at all the fake news back there. Donald Trump. They go, Donald Trump. You know, it's really funny. Donald Trump's lost it. So I beat 17 great Republicans. I mean, senators. I beat governors. A couple of people, great people like Ben Carson. I beat a lot of great people. Ben Carson was tough. But I beat 17 great people. And I respectfully say, I beat the Bush dynasty. Okay. That's over. Pretty recently. Okay. Now I have the privilege of going against crooked Hillary Clinton. So I beat, I beat crooked Hillary. I beat Crooked Hillary, and the Electoral College is hard. It's, frankly, if we didn't know better, and maybe we're starting to find things out that we didn't know, it's hard and harder to win than popular vote. Popular vote, you go to three, four states, and boom, 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 you win the — it's like the 100-yard dash versus running the mile. You practice differently. She forgot that. She forgot to go to a couple of very important states. Gee, I don't think I'm going to go to Michigan too much. I don't think I'm going to go, she said, to Wisconsin. I do hear her husband said, you know, you better go to Michigan. You better start going to Wisconsin. Well, fortunately, she didn't listen to that. But, but think of it. So I beat the Republicans, governors, senators. I beat the Bush dynasty, respectfully. I beat Hillary, who stole it from Bernie. Bernie should have won, but that's okay. They stole it. Superdelegates. How do you like superdelegates? But she's got superdelegates that were handed to her. Bernie should be angry. Why isn't he angry? <laughs> crazy Bernie. He is so crazy. But you know what? I saw him the other day on television. And he's ranting and raving. He's sitting behind a microphone. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The hair's flying. He's going crazy. <laughs> he's going crazy. And I said to my wife, Honey, look at that guy. You got to hand it to him. No, you got to hand it to him. He doesn't quit. He doesn't give up. I just don't understand why he allowed that to happen. And he goes back into being an independent. But now he's coming back in. And I guess he's going to run. He's going to run. But think of it. So you beat two dynasties. You beat all these politicians. Charles Krauthammer, when I announced that I was going to run, He said, why would he run? This is the fine — well, he didn't know me, so I, I'm not insulted. He said, this is the finest field of Republicans ever assembled. I actually did. I looked at my wife. I said, you know, that's his business. He just said, these are the finest ever assembled. Why am I doing this? And then I said, ah, that's okay. I'll do it anyway. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So I beat all these senators, all these governors, all these brilliant political minds. Then I beat the other side. And then I listened. Is he competent? I think I'm pretty competent, right? Don't you think so? Is he competent? And their ratings are down the tubes. You know why? Because people get it. They really get it. But it is funny to hear that you have all these victories. And you know what? More important than those victories, we're winning in the United States now. We're winning on trade. We're winning with our military. We're knocking the hell out of the terrorists. We're winning now in the United States. You look at what's going on. We have new deals being made. We have a deal we just made with Mexico. That's a fair deal. It's not that horrendous deal that was made years ago that should have been changed years ago. We're negotiating with Canada. We'll see what happens. We're in a little bit of a skirmish, but doing really well with China. You see what's going on? Really well. I have great respect for President Xi of China, 
but honestly, we have to be treated fairly. Last year, we had a trade deficit of anywhere from 375 billion with the B dollars to, I say, 504 billion dollars. Either one is not acceptable. So we're doing that, and it's working out very well. Uh, I just came on stage, and I was told that Kim Jong Un said some terrific things about me. He said, I have faith in President Trump. Think of this. You don't hear that from them. And just moments ago, they put on, they put on that he said very strongly that we want to denuclearize North Korea during President Trump's tenure. That's a nice, he just said it, just said it. But in the meantime, even if he didn't, even if he didn't, we got our hostages back. There's been no more missile testing. There's been no more rockets flying over Japan. There's been no more nuclear testing. And we have a good feeling. He likes me, I like him. Who knows what's going to happen? But I can tell you why. The day before I took office, and even, I must say, because, as you know, the rhetoric was fairly tough. It's interesting. With him, I had very tough rhetoric. And the fake news was saying, it's too tough. He's going to get us into the war. It's terrible. He's being too tough. It's horrible. What does he know about this? He knows nothing. I watched all these guys who have been losing for 30 years explaining why my method of negotiation wasn't working. Right? And I'll tell you what. I respect him. He respects me. And I think something's going to happen. Take your time. I say, we take your time. Sanctions are on. But think of it. We got back our hostages. I didn't pay $1.8 billion. We got back our hostages. Paid nothing. We paid nothing. But it's funny, you know, because other than NATO, because I got them to pay billions and billions of dollars more, because we're paying for NATO. We're paying this massive percentage of cost. We're protecting Europe. But I got them to pay billions of dollars more. And the fake news said he wasn't respectful to the leaders of other countries. And I, they're right in a way, because I said, listen, folks, I'm sorry, you're going to have to pay up. You got to pay up. You're delinquent. You know, in real estate, we say you're delinquent. And somebody asked me, it's really amazing they never covered this, because if they do, they would have said, this is terrible. One of the leaders in front of the others, 28 nations, one of the leaders, who I get along with all fell. They respect us now because they couldn't believe. For years, NATO spending was going like this. And by the way, this is spending to protect them against Russia. You know, they keep talking about Russia. We're protecting, I got them to pay billions of dollars more, okay? But they said, sir, could we ask you one question? It's always nice when a president or a prime minister calls you sir. That means he's a certain respect. He said, if you don't walk away from these meetings with us paying what we're supposed to be paying or much more, will you leave us? I said, yes, I will. And they all said, <laughs> and they all said, we'll pay. We'll pay. Now, the mainstream media doesn't want me to say that. They want me to say, no, no, sir. We'll never leave you. But then there's no reason for them to pay, right? Why would they pay? Supposing they ask me the same question. Sir, and we're talking about billions. And bit. last year, Secretary Stoltenberg, Secretary General, head of NATO, he goes around. He's like my biggest fan, and I like him, too. But he goes around saying, last year, that was when I just did a minor, because, you know, I was only in office for about 14 seconds. So I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to use too much bravado. You know how much they paid extra? $44 billion. That was last year. This year, it's much higher, because now I feel comfortable. I asked them in a more firm manner. And they're paying, and they should pay. But they were saying that I didn't treat them well. If I would have done what they said, or if I would have done what these consultants and these people that I watch on television, who used to do this stuff, they all failed. 
They failed miserably. So we have our own way. It's a great way. But it's really interesting because when I was dealing with North Korea and they were saying, he's too tough, he's too tough, one of my best meetings ever was with Vladimir Putin. And they said, he was too nice. He was too nice. They wanted me to have a boxing match on the stage. We had a great meeting. We talked about Ukraine. We talked about Syria. We talked about the protection of Israel. We talked about so many great things. But they came back and they said, it was terrible. I said, what well, was terrible? We had a great meeting. And you know, when I came off stage, they were all saying, that was a great meeting. Thank you. That was a great news guy. Then I got onto the plane and they said, sir, I don't think they like I said, they, they liked it. They're just fake. They're fake news. We had a great meeting. It was a great meeting. And you know the funny thing? If I was tough, if I would have said, you're never going to do this again. There'll be no more of this and no more of that and stood him right in the face and then started boxing. <laughs> you know what would have happened? They would have said, he's too tough. That was a disgrace to our nation. The truth is, with these people, you can't win, but we're winning. I'm president, you're president, we're winning. So everybody knows, John Tester's game. He says one thing in Montana, but does the exact opposite in Washington. That's what happens. He'll come home and tell you about your Second Amendment, then he'll vote for something where you knock the hell out of it. John Tester talks like he's from Montana, but he votes like he's Nancy Pelosi. That's what he votes. He's a Nancy Pelosi. No, look at his, look at his voting. It's the same voting as Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and the legendary Maxine. John Tester voted no on tax cuts, and he voted for the Obamacare disaster, which we almost repealed and replaced, but we'll get it done. And remember this, remember this, we got rid of the most unpopular element of Obamacare, right? The individual mandate. We got rid of the individual mandate. That was the most unpopular single. That is where you have the right to pay a fortune for the privilege of not having to pay a fortune for bad health care. Right? It's incredible. But we got rid of it. We'll get rid of all of it. And, and you know, one thing I have to say also, Obamacare was going up 115%. 125%, 80%, 60%, 53%, all different places. It was going up massively. You know, we want to repeal and replace it. And if we get enough Republicans, we will, and we'll have a much better health care. We've already come up with some of them, association care, et cetera. But, but to do it, and we will do it, we had it. We had it done. We had it done. But remember, Tester voted no. He voted no on Kate's law. Kate's law. What could be better than Kate's law? He voted no on enhanced vetting for refugees. Let's not vet them. Let's just let them pour right into Montana. And you see what's going on. And John Tester voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities. Tell me that. So that's not a person from Montana. I have a lot of friends in Montana. I don't get, I mean, I don't get it. How did he get elected? How did he get elected? John Tester voted for very liberal Obama judges 99% of the time. And yet, he would make it impossible for an incredible, distinguished admiral doctor not to get in. Figure that one. And yet, super liberal judges, many of whom are mocked and scorned. And John Tester voted against our incredible Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch. How do you do that? How do you do that? First in his class at Harvard, first in his class at Oxford, 
and he decides, I think I'll vote no. And by the way, Justice Gorsuch is great, and he's doing a fantastic job. And Justice Kavanaugh will do the same job. It's embarrassing to watch those people make fools of themselves as they scream and shout at this great gentleman. This election, you aren't just voting for a candidate. You're voting for which party controls Congress. Very important thing. Very important thing. I don't even bring it up because I view it as uh, something that, you know, what they, they like to use the impeach word. Impeach Trump. Maxine Waters, we will impeach him. But he didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't matter. We will impeach him. We will impeach. But I say, how do you impeach somebody that's doing a great job, that hasn't done anything wrong? Our economy is good. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? We will impeach him. But he's doing a great job. Doesn't matter. Remember that line. He's doing a great job. That doesn't matter. We'll impeach him. It is a uh, hell of a place in Washington. You know, I was thinking, if that happened, every time a Republican or a Democrat opposite got elected president. So let's say a Democrat gets elected someday. Hopefully, it's a long time. But let's say a Democrat gets elected. And let's say we have a Republican House. We will impeach that Democrat, right? And then a Republican. We won by a lot. We won by a hell of a margin. That's a lot of — that's a lot. That Electoral College, we won by a lot. Okay. So we're in there. We've got the best employment numbers in our history. We've got the best economy in our history. You look at the numbers in every category, it's great. We're doing a great job. We're putting on phenomenal judges. And you take that and you do. Then what you're going to have is you'll have a country that's going to turn in to a third world country. Because if the opposite party becomes president, every time before it even starts, before you've even found out whether or not he or she is going to do a great job, They'll say, we want to impeach him, and you'll impeach him. It's so ridiculous. But don't worry about that if it ever happens. But if it does happen, it's your fault, because you didn't go out to vote. Okay? You didn't go out to vote. You didn't go out to vote. That's the only way it can happen. I'll be the only president in history. They'll say, what a job he's done. By the way, we're impeaching him. Today's Democrat Party is held hostage by haters, absolute haters, left-wing haters, angry mobs, deep state radicals, and their fake news allies. Those people are the best. They're the best allies of the I mean, you look at the Washington Post or the New York Times, I can never get a good story. I mean, you look at this horrible thing that took place today. It's really — is it subversion? Is it treason? It's a horrible thing. Even — you know the good thing about that? Even liberals that hate me say, that's terrible what they did. And it is really terrible. You know, when I won the election, the New York Times, every — all their subscribers were leaving. And when I'm ultimately no longer president in hopefully about six and a half years from now, um, <laughs> The New York Times will go out of business. All of them will be out of business. CNN will be out of business. They're almost out of business now, if you look at their ratings. They're close to out of business. But they'll be out of business. But the New York Times, you remember, it's very famous. Nobody's ever seen it before. Maybe never done before. They apologized for their bad coverage of me. They apologized to their subscribers. Because after I won, everyone said, what the hell happened? What happened? We're reading this piece of garbage, and the guy that they kill every day, he won. So they wrote — does anybody remember? That was a very big story. They wrote an apology to their subscribers to stop the flow of people leaving and giving up their subscription to The New York Times. And it was quite amazing to watch. And, you know, honestly, for two weeks, they really covered me well. And then it began.
And then it got worse and worse and worse, and now we've reached an all-time level. The level of hatred is quite great, but that's okay. On the way over here, I saw a liberal pundit. He was filled with anger, and he was attacking me and our great administration. We have great people. I'll tell you, the White House is really working good. They had — my wife put out a tweet today. Did you see that she put — she doesn't do this. She put out a tweet. They had me stomping around, screaming with anger up in my area of the White House, where I live with my wife and son, Baron. They had me screaming, shouting like a lunatic. And I had a television. I said, what are they saying? I had six people in my office. I was in the Oval Office. And we were having a talk on trade. Actually, it happened to be trade with Canada. They were telling me what's happening. And they said, sir, you're not up there screaming and ranting and raving. You're here talking. That's how dishonest it's become. But I asked a young, bright staffer of mine, why are they so filled with this much hatred? Why? Our country's thriving. Jobs are booming. Prosperity is soaring. And the future has never looked brighter for the USA. And the young aide looked at me, and he said, Mr. President, these liberal pundits, the haters, but they're so angry because you've upset their entire way of life. It's true. But I said, but, but let's get this straight. So the country's really doing well. And he looked at me and he said something that maybe is true. I find it hard to believe. He said, sir, they just don't care. It's really pretty sad, right? You know, when you look at what's happening with all of it, including our military rebuilding, we're rebuilding, and everything that we're building is being made right here. The best missiles in the world, the best planes in the world, the best ships in the world. It's all being made right here in the United States. The so-called resistance is angry because their horrible ideas have been rejected by the American people, and it's driving them crazy. Crazy. They're the ones, honestly, that have been driven crazy. The latest act of resistance is the op-ed published in the failing New York Times by an anomalous, really an anomalous, gutless coward. You just look. He was uh, — nobody knows who the hell he is or she, although they put he, but probably that's a little disguised. That means it's she. But for the sake of our national security, the New York Times should publish his name at once. I think their reporters should go and investigate who it is. That would actually be a good scoop. That would be a good scoop. Unelected deep state operatives who defy the voters to push their own secret agendas are truly a threat to democracy itself. And I was so heartened when I looked. I think it's backfired. Seriously, people that don't exactly dig us and they don't exactly like me, they're fighting for us. It's an incredible — it's actually a beautiful thing. We've picked up a lot of support because at some point, this whole thing is going to be exposed. And it's really bad, and it's really dangerous, and it's really sad for the media and the mainstream media. It really is sad. When I told you about the good news coming out of Korea today, they will hardly even report it. If this were President Obama, that would be the biggest story in the history of our country. But it's going to be, sooner or later, it will be exposed. The policies of our political opponents have brought about only failure, destruction, and humiliation to our country. Look at what happened. Look at where we were, and look at where we are. And we have tremendous potential upward. And other countries, by the way, are not doing well at all. And had I not won, we would have been in negative. We wouldn't be at 4.2. We would have been in negative numbers. We were going down. We were low, and we were headed down. We freed up this country with the regulations 
and the tax cuts. We freed up our country, and it's great to watch. But if you don't elect Matt, I will tell you, they can change it very quickly. They said, Nancy Pelosi said yesterday, she wants to raise your taxes. I mean, okay. Tell me, is raising your taxes, like, supposed to be a popular thing to do? Because what's going on, they have been driven so far left. I don't know why they don't talk about red waves. I mean, historically, the person that's president, when you have the party having the president, they don't do well in midterms. But nobody's ever had, ever, an economy like we have. We, nobody's ever had this economy. So hopefully you're going to remember that. They robbed our middle class while spending trillions of dollars on adventures overseas. And we're pulling way back, but we still — we're so respected now. You can pull back a little bit, but we're so respected. They're not playing games with us anymore, folks. They're not playing games. I don't — I don't want to tempt them too much by telling you things that don't happen anymore to us, because there's no reason for me to tell you. But when you see some of the things that happened four years ago and six years ago and eight years ago, you take a look at what happened and you take a look at what happens now, where we took that horrible Iran deal and we terminated it, and you look at what's going on. We're respected again as a nation. We're respected again as a nation. But these people enrich themselves while shipping our jobs to other countries. And they oversaw the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of the world. It's true. This is the greatest transfer. NAFTA was such a bad deal. Some people say, oh, please, would you extend NAFTA? I said, we have to renegotiate it. It's such a bad deal. And when I was campaigning, I said, we'll either terminate it or renegotiate it. I don't care. But so far, it looks like it could happen where we'll renegotiate it. But these disastrous policies were on the ballot box in 2016, and they lost, and they lost big. That's why we're here. In 2016, the American people voted to reject this corrupt globalism. They voted to reclaim their independence and their pride. And they voted, most importantly, to make America great again. It's very simple. Soon we'll be changing it to keep America great. Keep America great. Soon. When should we do that, by the way? Okay, wait a minute. Soon we're going to have to change because we are doing well. So when do we change Make America Great Again to Keep America Great? I don't know. Soon. Soon. We're draining the swamp, and the swamp is fighting back. But don't worry, we will win. We will win. We always win. We always win. This November, you need to vote Republican. Vote for Matt Rosendale and vote to put America first. Have to do it. Have to do it. Republicans stand for stopping illegal immigration, fixing horrible trade deals, cutting your taxes in a major, major way, biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And in addition to that, we got ANWR. You know what that is, right, in Alaska? They've been trying to get that approved for 50 years. We got it approved. It's part of that plan. We'll be defending your Social Security, which the Democrats will destroy. And we're going to be defending your Medicare and protecting the safety net for truly needy Americans, people that need help that are Americans, not for people that come into our country illegally. <laughs> Democrats want to raise your taxes. They want to raise them. I don't get it. I don't think I could win if I said, I'm going to raise your taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to raise your taxes. Oh, good. Alice, I don't think we're voting for that guy. 
They want to raise your taxes. I don't know. Maybe they know something. I don't know. Blue wave. We're going to raise your taxes. We're going to let crime go all throughout our country. We're going to get rid of ICE so that as the crime comes in, we're going to have none of our people that are so tough. These are great people, but these are tough, strong. These are, these are warriors. These are warriors. I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. I'm looking at these people in the front row, two of whom I know. They don't want to do it. ICE does it like, hey, it's like, let's go out to dinner. They have done an incredible job. So they want to raise your taxes. They want to open your borders. They want crime to pour in because that's what's going to happen when you open your border. How about the governor, the governor's ship of California? He just announced that he wants to open borders and he wants to let anybody come in that wants to. And then he wants to pay for all medical, for all school. What happens, I said, if the entire world decides to go to California because they get free health care, free medical care, and free education? California has just increased in size to 500 million people. California has just become one really large person. California, think of it. He says, I want to open the border. I want everyone to come in. At the same time, for illegal aliens, illegal immigrants, a lot of different names, he wants to get rid of ICE. He wants to cut down on law enforcement. And he wants to pay for their medical, their health care, and their education. But I really asked the one, look, it's all about common sense, right? I think I won because of common sense. And because, like you, like you, you, me, we're smart. We're really smart. But I said to myself, just common sense, everyone's going to come in. I may even move to California to get free health care. I may move there. The last time Democrats were in power, they cut Medicare by more than $700 billion to pay for the scandalous Obamacare. Now Democrats want to steal trillions of dollars from Medicare. They're going to ruin your Medicare. Watch. They want to turn America into Venezuela. I don't think so. <laughs> Democrats would destroy Medicare with Medicare for all. You heard that. Medicare for all until they run out of money, which will be like uh, in the third day. <laughs> and then it'll be Medicare for none, or it will be one-tenth Medicare what you used to get. They want to rob our seniors of their Medicare benefits. And they want to raid your Social Security. They will destroy your Social Security. And I'm going to save your Social Security. We're not touching your Social Security. Do you remember when I ran? You remember when I ran? I said, I'm not touching Social Security. Everybody said, well, and everybody else wanted to do things with Social Security. I said, we're not touching your Social Security, right? I didn't touch your Social Security. Remember what I said? Growth. Growth will take care of it. Growth. And that's what's happening. We are growing beyond what anybody expected, beyond what those people thought was possible. We're growing. It's called growth. A lot of money's coming in. Democrats also want open borders. And all of that equals massive costs, massive, and massive crime, and massive tears, tears. You look at the families that have been so badly hurt. Republicans want strong borders. We want to finish the wall. We're up to 3.2 billion. We've done a lot of work on the wall. A lot of people don't understand that, but that's okay. Got to finish the wall, and we'll get that approved. We're going to get it approved. It's moving along. I'd like to do it. I could do that whole thing in one year, but these guys are holding back. The only thing Democrats are good for is obstruction and resisting. Their whole campaign is resist, resist. I don't get it. We're going to have no crime. We want to protect America's great people and its great citizens. We want to protect American benefits, and we're doing that, and I've done it. In Maryland, 
The Democrat candidate for governor wants to give illegal aliens free college tuition, courtesy of the American taxpayer. Come on in. Free college. In Florida, the Democrat nominee for governor wants to abolish ICE and release hundreds of criminals onto our streets. He wants to also take care of their Medicare and every other thing you can take care of. You name it, he wants to take care of it. And Florida will be a disaster. Florida is one of the most successful states in our union. It'll be a disaster. You have a great candidate in Florida. It's called the Republican candidate, Ron DeSantis. Ron for governor. This election is a choice between Democrats who want to abolish ICE and Republicans who want to abolish MS-13. It's very simple. People have no idea how bad they are. Nancy Pelosi got extremely angry at me when she started yelling, they're human beings. Don't talk to them like that. Don't call them animals. Remember, she said, don't call them animals. Then you see what they do and how they do it and the viciousness of it. No, I'm sorry, Nancy. I'm very sorry. Hate to tell you, Nancy. You're going up the wrong tree, Nancy. <laughs> Republicans stand proudly with the brave men and women of ICE, with Border Patrol, and with our law enforcement. Every single day, ICE is tracking down drug dealers, child predators, gang members, and vicious killers. And we're either throwing them the hell in jail or getting them the hell out of our country, and we're doing it fast. This election is about safety. This election is about jobs. It's safety and it's jobs. Thanks to Republican leadership, our economy is booming like never before in our history. Think of it, in our history. Nobody knew this was going to happen. If I would have said this on the campaign trail, if I would have used 4.2, you saw it was adjusted upward from 4.1. 4.2 GDP, the press would have gone after me. They would have said impossible. Jobless claims just fell to a 50-year low. 50 years. We've created over 4 million new jobs since the election and lifted almost 4 million Americans off of food stamps. Think of that. Not only is it good for them, our country saves a tremendous amount of money, but it's good for them. They have jobs. We've added over 400,000 new manufacturing jobs that the Democrats say are gone. And that number is going to very shortly, with what's happening in certain areas, be well over 600,000 manufacturing jobs. Something that makes me very happy, makes a lot of my friends very happy. African-American unemployment recently achieved the lowest, think of this, the lowest rate, lowest ever recorded in the history of our country. Remember, I said, what do you have to lose? Go with me. What do you have to lose? So good. We're going to have tremendous African-American support because they say and they see. You know, before I said, what do you have to lose? Now I say, see, look what's going on. The lowest unemployment in the history of our country. Hispanic American and Asian American unemployment have also reached their lowest rates in the history of our country, history. Youth unemployment has just reached its lowest rate in nearly half a century. Unemployment for Americans, this is so important, without a high school diploma, has reached the lowest level ever recorded. Think of that. <laughs> Women's unemployment recently reached its lowest rate 
in nearly 65 years. We've added 100,000 jobs, building pipelines and supporting the production of oil and natural gas. We've added something great to our portfolio.